I mean, from what I seen in the video, ball fade and then ball fade. Uh, I'm and, but I'm I'm keeping this a little bit. I'm so tr- don't, don't take trying to get that uh, David Beckham look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free, feel free. Yeah, thank you. Hey. But yeah, just 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 a little bit off the top. You can do a, just off the top, yeah, just a gotcha. tiny bit. Gotcha. And then uh then uh trim the beard. I actually like I like Ryan's how Ryan's is coming down a little bit. Okay. Kind of that fade in that fade gotcha. beard look. Gotcha. You know Shake what you're up. doing, Shake man. Them hands. <laughs> man, I've been following you for a minute. Man, I know, bro. I know. Dude. Hey, cuz uh the first time um you tagged me and I didn't know what was going on and I like, come on, man, this dude. Well, even before all that popped off, I was I was still following you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, man, hold on. This dude, because I saw the book. So how did it come about the book? The police book? Yeah. So we just, because we were on that trip, um, I would take these long walks every day. Okay. Sometimes, like just any city or town we were in, I would just, I would go out and walk six, seven miles on my own. Sometimes Nikki would, Nikki would be with me, but I would, uh, no, that's your wife. Nikki, yeah. Yeah, my wife. And then, I, so I would just walk around, and it happened real early where I uh, I passed an, a police officer in um, Santiago, Chile. Uh-huh. I passed a couple of them. And then that's that's where I started it. And then on my third one, I was in Valparaiso, Chile, on the coast, and then I was just like, man, I'm going to keep doing this. Hmm. And so literally, it, it, it would, um, sometimes it would be like really really crazy coincidences where I would get photos of police officers in in situations that they were like standing in front of a building or like the like the Taj Mahal these uh two oh, cops yeah, were I sitting dude he they they the the tour guy was like they never take photos for people and then I translated the, the translator translated for me and they sat down um right in front of with the Taj Mahal right behind them it was unbelievable so like stuff like that just kept happening so okay. by the time I got back I was like, all right, I gotta do something with this. Yeah, so I don't know, I don't know how much you guys know, but I, I, um, um, I traveled the world full time for uh, 27 months with my wife. We paused our careers, and um, we just, we just took off and, and traveled to 35 countries. But during that journey, I kept going to barber shops and. Um, getting haircuts in these awesome little sm- tiny barber shops around the world so then I started uh, started recording it about halfway through I started recording it and then it uh, and it just it just kept getting steamed and it's just such a fun it's just all the like barber shops are barber shops around the world they, everybody has their own different style and how they yeah. cut hair and stuff but yeah yeah dudes hanging out talking about local stuff and uh, so I just wanted to record that and share it with people but but I always knew, man. I this that's what's so cool about being here now is as I was getting this going in the back of my head, I was like, at some point, I'm gonna go down to Houston <laughs> and see my guy again. Man, so I, I was telling them like I remember when you got to Nicolay. Yeah. And when you found out that I cut hair, and he was like, bro, I need you to come cut my hair. And then I looked at you and I was like. I ain't want to say it, but I'm like, I can't cut your hair, man. You white. And you was like, bro, yes, you can. You can do it. I saw you. It's, then, thick, it's thick white. Like, man, he he hyped me up so much. And then when like, I went over to the crib and cut you, then moms and pops was like, oh, that is so nice. My first time, I'm like, man, y'all gassing me up. That's funny. <laughs> hey, but that, that got me to, uh, you know, like, Letting me know, like, all right, I just got to learn how to do it. Yeah. And, and the steps were actually easier when, when it came to cutting, like, uh, straight hair to, like, nappy or kinky hair. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, dude. So. Actually, I, I texted my mom, told her I was coming down here. Really? And she was like, I think you used to come to our house. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So you must have been what, fifteen? Yeah, because you was a junior, right? Yeah. You was a junior. I was a sophomore. Yeah. Because you didn't play on the JV, right? You just played on bar, right? Yeah. So I, I transferred as a junior. Yeah. Where did you transfer from again? Grafton. Really? Yeah. So I was a Navy kid. So I actually, I actually went to three high schools. So we were in Youngstown my freshman year, and then um, sophomore year went to that small town. And then Graffin. junior, yeah, junior. Did you play for Grafton? 
Yeah, I was. I started as a sophomore. We actually beat Nicolette. That was with uh, Jason and Jermaine and um, Jay Kemp and Tenero, right? That was that team, right? That JV team. No, 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 no. So I, as a sophomore, I was on varsity, oh. and we beat we beat Nicolet. Oh, you beat Bill, Bob, and Lamont. Huh? Andre. Yeah. Yeah, we we beat. They were uh, top ten, top eight maybe. Yeah. And we beat them in Grafton. Yeah, that was that year that uh, they was in the paper. Both yeah. of them got dunked on. Cause they, <laughs> cause they both. Oh, they used to get so mad at me for that, bro. Uh, they, I think. Yeah, I had just beat Rufus King, maybe, or Rufus King had just no, beat that they, team. They, they yeah, because that. Yeah, Rufus King team was real nice. That's what they, had. they had Brian Curry. Brian Curry. Yeah, um, yeah. They had, uh, yeah. Uh, Harrell. They had Jackson. Yeah, Alpha they were. Sean. Real nice. Man, they was deep. They they won state that year for I sure. Think so. Yeah, they were real nice because they were ranked in the um, mm -hmm. in the in the nation. But yeah, man, it's funny. So you were you were ninety five. Yep, yep. Yep. But I ended up going to Custer though. I ended up because you remember Bazline cut me, bro. Dude. That's why y'all lost. <laughs> bro. bro. No, and let me tell you my let me tell you my theory why y'all lost. The state game. Well, y'all didn't win state. Y'all supposed yeah. to win state, no, I bro. Know. I know. I know. Y'all y'all guard action was weak. Okay. And you want to know why? Because y'all had Tenero. I mean, not Tenero. Y'all had Cornell <laughs> as the backup. And every day in practice, J.K. and Tenero yeah. was just killing that dude. Yeah. I heard he couldn't even get the ball past half court a couple That's times. Probably true. So probably true. that would have never happened with me. <laughs> you remember, hey, that tryout when I played with you or Bill and Bob, we damn near like swept like swept cats. Like no, they wasn't really scoring, bro. I know. You know the dunks y'all had with them tryouts. Oh, I know. I know. And when he cut me, y'all was like, "Quit playing, you lying." He ain't cut you. Yeah. And I was like, I ain't go to school no more after that. That cat's corny as hell, man. I ain't go to school. Yeah, but he was more of a big man dude. He didn't like, look, he didn't like bro, Aubrey. He didn't have to do anything. He didn't like us. Phil. We had so much talent, man. He didn't like no guards, bro. So that's been my theory of my whole life, bro. That's why y'all didn't win state. That's this, win. Hey, that's the, that's the sad <laughs> thing about coaches. No, it really is. It's the sad <laughs> thing about coaches. That they could they can help kids oh, yeah, do or they well, or they can they could they could totally change the projection of a, a young person's life. Yeah. It's 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 horrible. I, I I hate bad coaches so much, man. Custer was especially nothing like Nicolet, especially bro. selfish coaches that wanted to make it all about them, and that was kind of. I think that's what he was kind of. That on. was kind of his deal, man. But hey, I used to have fun up there. It was a, a reality check when I went to Custer, though, because that was my first public school I went to. Because, you know, I was in the 220 my whole life. Yeah. So I wasn't used to a public school. It was all the way different. I'm trying to think. Charles Poe went to Custer, right? Poe? Uh, well, I was there with uh, GP. Remember Gangster Pat? Dude, I just talked to Gangster Pat probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I talked to him in December. Man. Yeah. He's supposed to be moving down to uh, Dallas. I was going to ask you, has Tony, Tony been down here? Who? Tony Mayfield. Uh, if he is, he I had don't a, know. He, had a, he lives in Dallas, but he had a spot down here. Oh, okay. If yeah. he is, I don't know. But yeah, Gangster Pat's moving to it. Uh, he's supposed to be moving to Dallas. Yeah, GP funny. He's hilarious. Man, he, His social presence, I told him, I was like, dude, you need to just be like a, an influencer. Man. He'll post the silliest stuff and get like 300 likes. Really? He's unbelievable. Yeah, man. He was different. Even in high school, he was different. So that's funny then. So did you, uh, you know, like me and Swan were real tight. Oh, yeah. Swan was my, good, my dude. So, yeah. Hey, crazy story, right? Yeah. Swan's daughter uh -huh. is my son's best friend. No way. They rock like, like she like my goddaughter. Oh, because, that's awesome. Because, you know, she ain't really know her dad like yeah. that. But, like, I tell her all the good stories I can oh, tell her man. about that dude, bro. Hey, I got, she, hey, bro, I got so many so stories. Really? She like Swan. I want to say she had a uh, one of her letters. No jumper. <laughs> no, no, she jumper. had a jumper though. Oh, really? She went to Bayview, and she quit because her and the coach, like, was this is when I first moved down here. So I think if I would have been there, she probably would have stayed. But she got letters from uh, UConn. Oh wow. Yeah, bro. Like, she looked just like dude. She rapped too. She oh, rapped really? too. She's so funny. 
Yes, I just too. had him down here because my son turned 22 for his birthday in August. So I had her, him, and then um, his two little brothers. Well, one is my other son and one is my stepson. But I had him down here and she was just like, uh, man, she, she, she swam, bro. That's crazy. She swam, bro. She God, the world is like so small. Dude. You know how silly he was? So small. So that, so that was my guy. That was my, yeah. He was my connection. Yeah, so he, would, he would introduce me everywhere, man. And what's crazy is, like, me and Swan were was the like, same age. Yeah, he was like, uh, he and he was, was so proud of me. He would take me everywhere. He, and he was high just, school together he was just, too? Well, he, um, like he was just, he was my running mate. So we were, we were high school, high school. But you know, uh, Swan played with Warning together, right? Yeah, we played, I played Warning. So those, those, uh, so you, hey, he, J. Rob, he came into the city and played the city uh, summer leagues with us. So Big J, Big J is so Jermaine Tree. You know him yes, as Tree. Yeah, I was. So he was. You see that warning league uh, video they did? No, uh, I don't know. Yeah, they did. A, they did a warning league video that showed the warning, the history of the warning league. Okay. And a, a Tree was so mad because they didn't highlight me. They showed Sam Oki. Oh, and Sam he did play. I know, but he was like, Matt, you were there way before Sam. Yeah. And, uh, and I think but he, Sam, I, I mean, obviously Sam. Sam's nice, but Sam, I, Sam, Sam was, was nice. nice, bro. I, mean, I don't he, know, bro. I thought you was kind of underrated. Yeah. Cause you could shoot. Like your range was crazy, and then like you wasn't scared to go to the rack hard. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I broke all the assist records too. For Nicolette? For the conference. Really? Yeah, yeah. No, I never knew that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're way broken by now, but. But I taught you that. Because, <laughs> hey, you know that, uh, so Big Rod. Jab, jab, jab. Uh, his... Rod from Marshall? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Big so Rod. him and him and Swan were real tight. Yeah. But his son, that's that's Jalen Johnson that went to Duke. Are Did you, you know kidding that? me? No, that's his son. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. And his, his other son, Kobe, is going to USC. Really? Yeah. So those. So I went to. I went up there um, last year to catch a game. Uh huh. Next level, bro. They because they went to Nicolay. Because okay, I because the one dude, both of them went to Nicolay. Or yeah. Because because Rod remembered what it was like in Nicolay and the uh, like the education and everything. Uh huh. So that's they brought. Back he, then, we yeah. Like he, top, top, we was the top. Like a blue ribbon or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But so yeah, he brought his kids there so they could get that level of education. But yeah, so uh, Jalen went to Duke. Now, I mean, he obviously just left. I didn't, he's going I didn't to the league. Yeah, he's nice, bro. Man, because he's every bit of like. He going to the league? Oh yeah, he'll be top twenty. He was supposed to be a lottery, but but uh, he got hurt at Duke and left early. So. You know who Jordan Poole is? Play for uh, Golden State. Yeah. You know he's from Milwaukee. He grew up in my shop. His daddy used to come in the shop when he was like. 11 or 12, bro, and try to bet anybody in the shop that they couldn't beat him in two ball. <laughs> <laughs> like four or five. Like, he was throwing out crazy numbers when nobody ever bet him, though. Oh, that's funny. I remember when, because he went to King before he went to the the preparatory school in Indiana. His okay. freshman year, guys never started a freshman, or let a freshman play. Freshman year, bro, the uniform was too big. The, the announcers was like, don't worry about a little guy. You got three more years to grow into it. Like, and he, and he, he had to bring nice. like damn, bro. But yeah, me and his dad real cool. His big pool. His dad uh, played football for Michigan State. Okay. That's why I'm, I was shocked when he went to Michigan. So his his uh, dad had Milwaukee roots as well. Well, his dad played at Simeon in Chicago. Okay. So I don't know how they. I think uh, the reason he came to uh, Milwaukee is because he was a manager at the Oak Creek uh, UPS. Okay. So I think that was the the reason why he was in, in Milwaukee. I, I think I'm not sure. But yeah, he went to Simeon when like. Uh, That's Antoine Walker. Won Nick Anderson there? Nick Anderson for. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was. He was Orlando. After we got out of high school, I couldn't tell them apart no more. Yeah, I can still. What's funny is I can still tell them apart. Really? Yeah, voice and face. Okay. 
I have a harder time with Jason and Jermaine than I can tell them apart. Yeah. Uh, Jermaine actually introduced me to Rayford Austin when I was back at home, like when he first uh, started playing for the Bucks. Oh, really? I don't know how they was cool, but he introduced. We was in the club one night. He, he the first one to introduce me. I used to see him, Rayford Austin and Sam Cassell, like out by themselves all the time in Milwaukee when they played. No way. And so, well, since uh, Jermaine had introduced me to Ray, like he was always cool with me after that. Like he was a real down to earth dude. As a matter of fact, I, when I had moved here and I started working at the shop around the corner when I first got here, he had came in here. And when he seen me, he was like, man, we just hollered at each other last week. Yeah, Sam, you know, because uh, I played junior college down here my sophomore year at Tyler. Okay. So, you know, you, uh, I don't know if you know much you guys know junior college, but the ty- Juco's down here are unbelievable. Yeah. San Jacinto. I think okay. uh, I think Sam Cassell played at San Jacinto or he, he played at one of them. It was in our conference because those, all those teams are in our conference. Okay. But, uh, yeah. That was around the year you was? Not, not the year you was in. No, no, no. He was before me. Yeah, yeah. He's older than me. But, um, but yeah, he, there's a... He's a legend down here, man. Oh, yeah. Then he, he came and got the chips with the Rockets. Yeah. He's going to be a head coach soon. Well, I know the players love him. Yeah. Shit, he was a great point guard to me. Hell, yeah, he was. He was a great point guard. Yeah. yeah. Like, he was one of the first ones that I saw give GP problems. Yeah. He used to get GP. Like, don't get me wrong, GP was defense. Well, that's because, like, GP was all about intimidation. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, Cassell wasn't having that. Nah, dude. he wasn't. You have a surprise. Like, Milwaukee has just blown up with players, dude. They got so many players up there yeah, now. That's a good thing, bro. It's unbelievable. That's a good thing. Yeah. Because it wasn't doing that before like that. You know what I'm saying? They got so many now. You got some good players here, though. You got some good players, man. Like, think about this. Remember Sadinki? Or you went around then, or he was after you. No, I that name. Sadinki just kept going to jail, bro. If Sadinki didn't go to jail like that, man, he was giving everybody problems. Yeah. I saw him dunk on um I saw him dunk on Sanjay with some low top oh, really? on, bro. Two hands. <laughs> Two hands, bro. And like and then one no, he was it was like he got the ball, did a drop step, bro. Yeah. Well that's the thing, is you cause you had guys like Gangsta Pat, you had like really good summer players mm-hmm. that we just we never got looks. Back no, that nobody coaches it. would not come up there to see players. Mm-hmm. When um when uh who was that uh what's his name that went to uh Sam Ogie? No, nah, it was after that. Uh, he went to Menominee Falls. I want to say Brad Christian. Uh, after that, like then he ended up going oh. to Duke. Oh no, Dakota. He went to North Carolina, Dakota. Okay. Remember when he was there? That was the first time I ever heard about John Calipari, Shasevsky, uh, and everybody. Everybody coming in town, out. yeah. Yeah, they never did that, bro. Yeah, those coaches are up there now. So now they know we got talent coming from out of there. Yeah. I love these new lights you guys use. This is the ring lights. Oh man. They do such a good job. Yeah. So, hey, in, in, in different um, country barber shops, is it yeah. just the barbers, or they some of them do be having stylists in there with them? Man, I'll tell you. Um, so I'll tell you. I'll tell you what the Asian spots have that are amazing. They they there's like a team approach. Oh. Okay. So like you might walk in and then a. Uh, um, one girl might wash your hair okay to get you started yeah and then you get it then you get your cut and then they might do some uh, uh maybe she'll end with like a shoulder massage or she might help out with the with the shaving cream something okay. like that okay. so it's like very much like a team approach yeah. where everybody has their different skill 
Okay. So um, that's that's kind of the unique thing about it, and it's a lot more pampering because the whole the whole Asian culture is more about pampering. They're they're real big on like the massages and the the pampering, and oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they're that's just their their thing. Um, so that's 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 one of the uniquenesses of it. But a lot of spots too, though, like like this spot in uh, Danang. It's Where crazy. I, this, this is what the the most eye opening thing as we traveled oh, is okay. um, hip hop and just urban culture in America yeah. is everywhere, bro. Yeah. Huge, yeah. dude. Yeah. It is huge. Dancing at like one in the morning, bro. It's huge. So I met up with them in Vietnam when I was traveling over there. Yeah. Huh. When I came and I was going to see uh -huh. everybody. What, urban hip hop? Yes. They love it. Well, we were, yeah. It was like one in the morning, we're walking through, and there's this, this random park with like, and it was probably what, 50, 60 yeah. kids? Yeah, just doing b-boy breakdowns. Break down, serving each other, really? dance offs, and it was, it was crazy. We were, we were in uh, this small town near Osaka, Japan, uh -huh. And this, I walked by this shop, and it, this dude had like all these like Tupac shirts, Biggie shirts, really? like all this awesome like old school hip hop gear. And then I met him outside, and he had like the baggy pants, big shirt, hat, hat kinked. And I was just like, "Hey, man!" I was like, you, "Is this your shop?" He's like, "Yeah." And um, I was like, "I love it, man. I love love everything you got going on here." Uh -huh. And I, I said, "Have you ever been to America?" And he's like, "No." Really? He had never been to America, but he's so influenced by the culture. And his shop probably kind of reminded you of a, something in America. Yeah, it's. I mean, and it's probably popular for that. Yeah, it was. Too. I mean, he loved it, but um, yeah, it's wild. It's everywhere. I mean, you think about America, man. All we, all we, we got, we produce technology, and we produce culture. About it, music, movies, and sports. Sport. I mean, yeah, sports is part of that, but yeah, that's about it. But some sports, the the NBA. The, I mean, but I mean, I guess the world kind of cares about the NBA, but that's about the only sport we got, dude. The rest of the world doesn't care about baseball or football. They care about soccer. Yeah, soccer. That's why this soccer is the number one sport in the world. Yeah, Absolutely, it it's the biggest thing. You know what the number two sport in the world is? Yeah. Cricket. Cricket. Did not tell you it. Remember we were talking yeah. about uh, lucrative sports, and I was like, cricket and uh, water polo be lucrative sports. You know Cricket's huge. Cricket's huge as hell. Yeah, football's not even, like, our football's oh, not even that big. Our football is just us. Cricket we love it. I mean, it is, to me, it is our, yeah, it's my favorite sport. Yeah. That thing. Our football don't go <laughs> everywhere like, India, like they feel. Like, they don't, they don't even respect cricket. our football. And I don't even think cricket is an Olympic sport, is it? No. I don't think so. It's not? Really? That'd be a hard. Yeah, it's it's they're long. The games are real long. Oh, okay. Well, well it. baseball is soccer. Be long. Hold on, man. <laughs> but soccer is only forty eight minutes ahead. Forty eight or fifty minutes, something like that ahead. Forty five. Forty five. Forty five minutes. Yeah. Three games. Oh yeah, you can't be doing all that. Everything's out of the city. They have to. They can probably modify it for Olympic. Yeah, they can do that. Do it like. They had to come up with it first so the Olympics like can stay. like basketball, they, they do a different time they, to run and clock. Then we do half. Then yeah, do they halves. change the rules. They got international rules. Halves, running clock. And then they, how they do it, man? Olympics? Two halves? I'm not sure. They play two halves. Did you go play overseas or no? NBA. Uh-uh. No. I played. Actually, I got paid to play in America briefly so I could say that I was pro for a minute. But that I just, I understood my future wasn't going to happen. Okay. So I adjusted quick and then uh, that's where I got my graduate degree and coached for two years. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's still, I, I mean. Looking like Dave Beckham every single more and more and more. I love it. I no, I mean, there's, there's always regrets in life, but Beckham. my life's so, I'm so blessed. I can't. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm all my, sure all my decisions, especially that's our age now. Yeah, if we could have went back and did shit different. We would have. Yeah, for sure. Out of all these places you traveled outside of America, what was your best uh, barbershop experience? Best barbershop? Um, 
There's some unique ones. For like the uh, all over barber shop would probably be in Bali. There's a guy there, he's a New Yorker, and his, his wife is uh, Indonesian, she's Balinese. She, she's got like a, a women's spot on the, on the first floor. So he opened a barber shop on the second floor. It's tight. He's got really talented barbers. And uh, he does it. He does it right. Like like you guys. I mean, you walk in. They put a, a drink in your hand. They got cigars there, and then they use some of the girls from upstairs to come out. They'll, they'll do your uh, do your nails, massage thing, get your skin right. They'll do like waxings and stuff. So you get like the full experience um, at his shop. But yeah, it's his his spot's pretty nice. Yeah, and he's he's a good business owner, and uh, and the, the barbers are really talented too. Because at the end of the day. You can't cut hair. People aren't gonna come back. Yeah, yeah. You can you can do all that you want. No matter how much. Yeah. Who you are. Yeah, and all the pampering. Yeah, exactly. And I have been there. Yeah. I've been I've been dude. I've been in some crazy shops. There's um, one shop in um, you talking about like most memorable, um, Kolkata, India. Kolkata as a city is probably twenty five million. 20, 20 million. That West Bengal area, it's it's uh, on the border. There's, they say there's like 70 million in that area. So it's just compact and crazy. Just they got the busiest. So India is a country of about 1.4 billion. So the whole country, the whole country is busy. They have the busiest airport. I'm sorry, the busiest train station in the country there that we, we went to, and it's just crazy. But uh, we went to a I went to a street barber. That uh, it's it's essentially like as big as this, where they got three barbers in there at the same time. Haircut was like a dollar fifty, but um, guy was tight, man. He trimmed me up nice, old school barber. And uh, but they, so hold on, bro. You, did you hear this? A dollar fifty, <laughs> <laughs> dude. They got they got spots in um oh, in Malaysia. They, they they'll have like outdoor markets where they get a bunch of barbers all together, and a guy like rent out the space for these guys, and it'll be like a dollar. The guys will come in and out. Real quick, cut your hair in like ten minutes, get you in and out. Oh, and it's, it's not the face, it's, no, no, it's not the tightest haircut, but um, and they're just operating with what they got, limited tools, but it's it's out real quick. And some of those places, I mean, with the population so big, it's all supply and demand. Yeah. So if you got a lot of barbers, I mean, you got a, a dollar and a, and a dollar, and over there too, though, in in Asia, you can live off of you don't you don't need to make so much money to live either. Yeah. Yeah. Ten minutes a cut, in and out. Six bucks an hour. Wow. Yeah, that's that's eye opener right there. Yeah. Especially where we used to. What stinks is I, I there was a lot before I started recording. I wish I'd recorded. That you missed. Yeah, like there was a there was a shop down in uh, Chile. It was Colombian um, barbers, and they would um, when they went to shave, they would just take the razor right out the box like jailhouse and just use the just use the blade to edge you up. Yeah, and in some, some places they'll just they'll take the blade and just light it up real quick, get it hot, oh, and hit you with really? it. Yeah. But um, but yeah, fire. You see fire in different places around the world. But it's awesome because at the end of the day, it's. I mean, it's. Everybody's going for the same thing, though, right? Camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Um, place for dudes to go and hang out. That's why I was. I always said, I can go anywhere in the world and get a job. A- absolutely, and that's the the the, the air we're going into. If you can work with your hands, it's gonna be about trade more than uh, Amen. If you there's unless you can go to an Ivy League school, it college is gonna mean less and less. Go go figure out a trade, work with your hands. 
That's where it's at. Start a business. Start a business. I mean, it, but if we, your hands, though, it's the, it's so important. Like people back in the day, people would never talk about like plumbers and electricians. Mm -hmm. Like that, that's. But they've been so that's, 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 that's where it's at. The prosperous people in the community. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You always need. Food. Everybody values a college education. It's like never going to be a time in the world where you don't need a plumber. Yes. I think you know college is because I, that's 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 what that's the old way. That's what everybody was taught. Yeah. You do this. You do that. You do that. Yeah. But the world has sped up so fast. Dude, we're waking up, man. Yeah. We are waking up. I mean, look at some of these guys. A lot of these billionaires and stuff, they don't go through college. All of you guys don't even have college degree. Yep. FedEx was started in dude's garage. Man, a lot of a lot of these companies were started packages. in somebody's garage, bro. Didn't Bill Gates drop out of college or something like that? Yeah, didn't. Zuckerberg, same. Zuckerberg, yeah. Twitter dude. Now the Twitter dude selling people, making money off him, and they selling tweets. That's crazy. So you you hip to that? You guys hip to NBA Top Shots? You guys watching this NBA Top Shots stuff? Mm -mm. You ever seen that? That's like the digital cards? Yeah. My brother was just talking to me about buddy, that, bro. Buddy, buddy. Nah, this is crazy, it's bro. It's fire. Instead of just getting like the old traditional cards, David now they got digital, no, digital cards with like plays and highlights, bro. And it's going you might crazy. be like the in, in, in increasing value, bro. So it's like an investment. You know what I'm saying? Depending on who you got. Play it like a, yeah, it's like a like sick-ass card. So it's like, like a sick-ass like LeBron dunk. Oh, I love it, dude. It's a, it's yeah, yeah, bro. And you can you dunk. Digitally, dude, like those are blockchain. nice. My brother just started. He just talked to me about that, bro. Man, that's a look great that, that way. I love it, Look at man. that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, I love it's those. Like having, Thank you. Not just having a sports card in your hand. You have it digitally. Yeah, bro. And it could be like LeBron James getting the alley-oop. Doing yeah, it's, it's some, it's a, but it's it's so I've been I've been trying to partake with the top shots. Okay. So what happens is when they drop a new pack, it's like essentially like a pack that we're used to, like you go buy the store a pack. Well, now it's like a digital pack, but you have to sign up and you got to get in line in order so to yeah. Hold up, RB. So you got to but yeah. You, so there's only so many, but they're doing these releases where there's like 40, 45,000 of these, but you got to get in line like 15, 10 to 15 minutes before. I've tried five times. Each time I'm like between 150 and 225 thousandth in line. <laughs> so I haven't, I haven't got one yet. Dang. It's dude. It's so. But here's but here's the thing though, and this is this is what we're talking about with the old, with the regular cards. Is people in other parts of the world, they can't like our traditional sports cards in Australia and Asia. They can't necessarily get them because like the tops and those other places aren't selling them over there. But they can do this. So that's why you got all these people coming in, and NBA is hot everywhere. So you got all these people that are online at the right time trying to get these digital cards, and that's why you got 300,000 people waiting for a $14 drop on a new pack. But the cool thing is, like, I'm sitting here thinking, man, why can't I get one of these? But NBA players are also tweeting, they're like, I still can't get a pack. <laughs> sitting in line, can't get one. So it's not they just, ain't even get they one. can't get it. So uh, thank God it's like truly random where they're not. It's not like certain people are getting all the packs. Mm -hmm. It's uh, none of us are getting them. So, but yeah, this stuff's hot, dude. Like a LeBron sold for like two hundred thousand. Like this is a legit, like a legit card. It costs like twenty dollars. Sold for two hundred thousand shortly after. And it's a digital card. It's a it's digital a card. For one play. It's like a, like him dunking. Yeah. Damn. And it's it's so weird because you're like all it is is an it's a small little video. The but but what it is is like it's one of one. Well, that not that's not no that that one's I think one of like twenty one hundred. Oh, okay. But if you get it, there's certain they number it like one through twenty one hundred. Mm -hmm. But if you get higher in the in the pack, like if you're number one of twenty one hundred, right. it means more. Right. Oh. So people want that. Your, your people want is, that number one. Your pick is, yeah. And sometimes if it's like the player's number, wow. like if it's twenty three and it's LeBron or whatever. But a lot of those are they're yeah. doing like one of ten. Yeah, they're so doing small numbers. Back when we were collecting cards and they made a billion of them. Yeah, it, who knows how many they made. Worth shit, but now when you know there's only 10 of them. They're worth more. They're, the ones and zeros taking over the world. That's all it is, man. By near code, isn't it? I'm teaching my son how to code. It's digital just world. like any language. It's like, yeah. might as well. The digital world is about to be, 
Yep. If you can't tell the computer what to do, the computer's gonna tell you what to do. And that's, I mean. <laughs> right, in a nutshell. I robot. Hey, I was just yeah. thinking that, bro. Look, in a nutshell, yeah. like you in a nutshell. Yeah. Right? I didn't have to laugh. You messed my mind. I'm like, you better, better learn how to tell her what to do. Right. They're going to tell you what to do. Right. You start thinking about some of these movies wow. they are making. It's, yeah, it, it, it lets like, you know, right? Yeah. It's, I always it's say it's movies. It's documentary. It's, 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 it's not a movie. Program. Bro, have you watched The Matrix lately? The new one? No, no the, the old, first one. It makes so much sense now that we're in the time. That was 20, like 22 years ago. It's insane that they had that much foresight. It's like, what? Right. Dude, like say, future. So many people will say Matrix is a documentary. It's not a movie. Right. They, it, it's crazy how much they saw. Twenty over twenty years ago. Right. Y'all got red pills, blue pills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cryptocurrency taking over the world. Your name. Yeah. Stop. Nah, stop. Oh, oh man, teach me some game. Man, it's. I can't imagine. I mean, it's so volatile, but I just can't imagine it not being something large. It's volatile, but it's the new thing. You jump on it early. Hey, so, what about the asset tokens? It's, like, it's the, definitely a. Uh, so. Well, I invested okay. one that's called AMP. Which and one? A M P? Yeah. And it's uh basically it's an insurance for when cryptos start getting spent in brick and mortars, uh huh, that the money is there that they saying that they spend it. Okay. So it's like the bank, like F D I C. Yeah. So I bought it at two cents. And I'm just like shit, if this shit go up, <laughs> which it should. Yeah. Because no. the, cause if you look at the the graph, the momentum is going up. Absolutely. Yeah, and the the altcoin. So that's that's considered an altcoin. An uh, altcoin, yeah, right. Um, and the altcoins will absolutely follow this Bitcoin run. Okay. And there's big predictions on Bitcoin, man. Big really? big predictions, yeah. I mean, you can get him. One of the top guys in the game. He's got the best podcast and everything. Anthony Papiano. Uh -huh. He just he just predicted publicly that Bitcoin would get to a million by 2026. Oh. Man. And right now it's about fifty-two thousand. Yeah. So if it if as it as those big ones make the run, those altcoins will follow. Okay. Yeah. The, at least that's what happened in twenty seventeen. The only difference is is now we got all these NFTs in there that's taking a lot of money. So it's it's hard to guess what could happen. Yeah. I know. Uh, on um, Coinbase, they just put like four new coins on there. Yeah.
No, the mustache, right? Get above the lip. Get, get right here, right above the lip. Then I'm above yeah. the lip, and then above it too, or? What you think? How about how you I like I trust it? you. Okay, I got you. Yeah, just take it, yeah, I trust you. <laughs> Please stop talking, bro. Oh man, man. No, Please stop no, talking. Stop, stop talking, bro. You don't be having a part right here, right? I usually have a hard part. You do? Yeah, we're at. Right here where it, where it's Can separate. you see it? Can you see a little bit? Well, it's not there no more. But yeah, because it's, it's, it it's been like. So you usually have it going right here, right? Well, no, actually, uh, it's a little bit further in. So go. You can, it, where it naturally parts there. Okay. Do it right um, there. But I don't, you know what, if, I don't necessarily need a hard part this time. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I, I'm up to changing it up. That's cool. Yeah. Puff up. That's all good. The big ass 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How many kids have you got? Me? Yeah. None. None. None yet? Yeah. Right, so y'all right. uh, going where in the morning? Is Honduras. This? Okay. Yeah. For fun or work? Yeah, just just uh, hanging out. They got uh, scuba diving there. Oh, okay. Um, deep sea fishing. It's my brother. My brother's gonna join us. Okay. The just some bonding, dude time and. Yeah. But yeah, they March got Madness. they got yeah March Madness March. and uh, they got the second largest coral reef in the world. So there's amazing. Oh really? Yeah, there's amazing um, water options for like snorkeling, scuba, okay. great fishing. I know maybe, what that maybe. is from watching um, um, Shark Tank. Not Shark Tank. They do it uh, down there? Not Shark Tank. Uh, like Shark Week. No. Uh, the dudes that make the fish tanks. I'll be watching dudes. Oh, really? Yeah. i never seen them before. You, you ain't never seen the dudes uh -uh. Be, uh, doing uh, like the celebrity fish tanks and stuff? No, I've never seen that. Dude, it's it's... I know everybody talks about like going to Mars in the, in the space. Mm -hmm. To me, man, the ocean is unbelievable. You get underneath there and you, you see these exotic fish. It's just so crazy. It's mind boggling. It's fish down there, it's mind, dude, it's mind boggling. You see these fish and the way that they adapt to everything around them and they like their colors change and the, like so many exotic fish. I just, I just love being in the water, man. See stingrays and um, I didn't see a shark at this trip. I've seen I've swam with sharks before, Galapagos Islands and stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, they got sharks out here and turtles. Have you ever seen a, a sea turtle roll up on you? It's uh, it's it's, big, right? it's insane, bro. They're yeah. so big. Well, I I was. Um, I was snorkeling in Galapagos Islands and a, a shark, like a seven foot shark rolled up right next to me. Like literally seven, eight feet from me. Really? 
can't, you can't like my heart just like, I, I couldn't breathe, bro. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. <laughs> I just, I froze. I'm like, oh, this is it. <laughs> yeah. And then to say, I saw a hammerhead. Man. Uh, my mom, man. Yeah. Just bite my arm or something. <laughs> yeah. Bite me in the leg. I saw a hammerhead once and the same oh, thing. Wow. Just fro like just the idea of a hammerhead is just so wacky. They got a hammerhead down we, at their aquarium in the Oh area. really? Yeah. It's just such weird. It's Man, so it's weird. Big too. So when you see it like live and it's in front of you, you just freak out. What's that? I ain't never seen nobody do like straight hair and stuff like that. Like, oh, I ain't, I ain't. Thank you. My boy here? Nah, I don't say that. He's <laughs> that. Cause see, down here it's different cause you might cut a dude and he ain't gonna be white. You, you might think he white, but then he'll start talking. He not white. <laughs> Dude, the multiculturalism in Houston's off the oh, hook, bro. bro. Oh that's my god. It it's like United Nations down here. Yeah, it is, yeah. bro. You got some of everything down mm -hmm. here. And see what's crazy is like we right across the street from a Colombian shop and right down the street from some Colombian shops. So you know, you see it's a Colombian club right Oh there. Columbia? Columbia, yeah, it's Colombians, bro. So Word. they kinda look like like us. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. You got one that looked like me. Him, you got man. one that looked like him. Yeah. No. You know sure. For sure. Got one that might come in and look like you. Yep. But when they get to talking, you be like, oh, okay, <laughs> nah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, um, I was real lucky with my, my job that I, was, I had, um, it's technology. I was a sales rep for a technology company and the company was based in Paris. And I, I had a hot streak where I won a five international sales awards with them and they would take the top 40 sales people in the company and we'd go to awesome places. And we'd take our wives with us or our spouses. Uh, so they would have, we had uh, these trips, uh, Istanbul, Turkey, Goa, India, Chiang Mai, Thailand, Cape Town, South Africa, and uh, one year they came to Miami, Florida. But it was through those trips that I got introduced to international travel, and it blew my mind, bro. It, cha it changed me. And so my, um, my wife and I, we used to, we used to like, mostly take vacations to like Vegas and Florida. So we started doing international travel instead. So we went to go like Croatia, Greece, and down to Argentina and Brazil. And, um, and then we just started setting goals of like, man, if we could just pause our careers and just do this. Cause like we, we would do the, the typical 10 day trip or look, the vacation that we could have as Americans. And then we'd get back to the grind and work our tail off and make more money and all that stuff. So we were just like, man, if we could just do it for a long period, Let's try to do it, and uh, that's what it was. It was just that I just wanted to see the cultures around the world and uh, experience it. And that's that's what I was so proud of is because we did it real authentic, where we stayed with a lot of people 
We uh, um, we shared a lot of housing with hosts. So we had the mm-hmm. chance to really see all oh, these. So y'all got to see the inside. Yeah. Inside, not the, the culture, the real culture. Real culture. Yeah. A lot of festivals, a lot of, lot of music, a lot of got drinks. Got to understand what they were Hanging out with people. History and all of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Really, like, um, and that's, the, instead of, like, because that's, that's what I always tell, try to tell people. If they go on vacations to resorts or wherever, I'm always like, well, just get out of the resort at some point. Mm-hmm. Visit the locals. Go to a town away from the city you're at. Go visit locals. And that's where you're really going to understand the culture. Because uh, if, you're, if you're just at a resort on a beach somewhere, that could be a beach anywhere in the world. But if you go and visit the people or, that, are, that are there, then you're really going to understand really what makes us all the same. Because we're all the same around the world. Um, we all have similar desires and wants. But there's also other cool things that, we're, that makes us not the same. What was the most interesting thing you learned about a country that, like, you wouldn't know unless you went and kicked it with well, the, like, what was the most surprising oh, thing? That okay, you- here's a fact for you. Fiji. Okay. So, my wife and I, we land in Fiji. We actually met friends there. Gorgeous islands. Everybody knows Fiji Islands. Gorgeous islands, scuba diving, snorkeling, all that stuff, exotic. So instead of taking a taxi, it was going to be like $130 for a taxi. It was going to be like $6 for the bus, local bus. Probably take about a half an hour longer. But again, we like to, we like to be around the people that are there and do their stuff. So we get on, we get on the bus and um, there's a bunch of Indians on the bus. Like from India, Indians are on the bus. And I'm just like, man, I didn't realize that Indians like vacation in Fiji this much. I know I, I, it was just weird. Come to find out, half of the population in Fiji is Indian. Because in the 50s and 60s, they, the British colony brought over the Indians to do the sugarcane work. So something like that is like you look at Fiji and you're like, okay, I just thought this was like a Pacific Ocean island. It's half Indian, and you and you get that like different parts of the world. These um, for for whatever reason, whether like like when we were at, I went to the Philippines last year, you see what looks to be Spa- like Spanish words all over the place. It looks like Spanish words are in the Philippines. You're like, why does it look like this is Spanish? Because the Spaniards landed in the Philippines back in the day, brought all their culture with them. And their words, so the Filipino language looks like Spanish. Yeah, it's wild. So stuff like that. Um, and then you, then you start, when you start to understand like true history and how like these dudes that settled everywhere and how they just destroyed the indig- indigenous people, it's crazy. Like, like how young Australia is. Australia is a really young country. Really? Dude. Like I think like 1825 is when Melbourne was settled in. But they went in there and the... the the history of the rumor, I, I think it's true. They brought the kind of the criminals from the UK and the British down to Australia because they found Australia. They found this big li- island, but they brought the, the criminals down there to settle in Australia to, to uh, kind of like fix up the land and whatnot. But that was like less than 200 years ago. That's short. 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 We got relatives that we are from, like, not know, but familiar with their history. And yeah. It's like that's not many generations, but then they get in there and they wipe out the indigenous people, and that's what that's what screwed up. And you look at like what, um, like how young New Zealand is, similar. Like I learned this history about this bird, this bird, this co- this bird called a moa. It's a moa bird, dude. If you look it up, so uh, if you ever look at an ostrich, an ostrich is really big. Okay. This moa bird is like three times the size of an ostrich. It's literally a dinosaur. Basically, right. And it was, it was just on New Zealand like 400 years ago before they started settle, settling on New Zealand. And they, they, it was such a slow bird. And they're probably like, who are these people? They've never seen 
humans before, so they didn't know to run, so they were killing the bird to eat it because yeah. it was such an easy kill for protein or whatever. But these massive dinosaurs were on New Zealand like 400 years ago. Like you learn stuff like that and you're like, man, you feel so dumb. It's one of those things like people are like, what'd you learn while you travel? It's like, I learned I'm dumb because the more, the, the more I learn, the, no, the more I know, like, I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Like this whole world is crazy. Oh yeah, we only learn what they want us to learn. Like, do you know, um, this was crazy. So I, I volunteer at a near West Side community in Indianapolis. It's a 90, 98% Latino community. But I go over there and I work with the, work with the kids and I, I sit, in, uh, sit in the classroom to do some tutoring and stuff. But I was in a classroom with eighth graders. This is like three years ago. No, it's, well, I was traveling, so this is probably, probably five years ago, four or five years ago, I was in a classroom. And they were teaching about this guy in um, Northwestern Africa who was to this day would be the richest person ever to live on earth. Uh, Masa. Ma Masa, Masa, Musa. Masa Musa. Dude. Yeah. So this is all new history to me. Yeah. I'm sitting in class and they're teaching this and I'm literally in the back of the classroom Googling like, is this teacher like making stuff up? <laughs> Like, like, why did I never know this? Yeah, man, dude, lying. And then, so we're learning new history all the time. This guy, this guy gave away so much gold. Did you have you heard this story? I heard about Massimo. He, he went. Did, he, I don't. I don't know the. the so so gold and when he when he went to Mecca, uh -huh. he gave away so much gold. He he had like a crew of thousands, really? and he would just give away gold on the way that he changed the. Uh, the value of gold in the world for like four years. I learned all this stuff just because I was listening to class in the eighth grade, I, these eighth graders, and I was like, this is all brand, they're just making stuff up. But they never taught us the real history 25 years ago. That was all, 25 years ago, that's just made up, like now we're starting to learn real history. Yeah, yeah, then you hear it from the locals and you start to understand. No. Oh, this is nice. It's crazy because history has a history has a shaky history too. <laughs> <laughs> and this, you everything you thought you knew, you don't know. And he, so this is let me I, I haven't really I, Well here's the thing here. I haven't really talked about this. So let me ask you guys this though. So today, now this is twenty twenty one. We're going through a a, a time right now where we're starting to eliminate some of our history. We're tearing down statues, we're erasing stuff from books, and now this is 2021. So if this has happened throughout, like every 200 years, they've erased history. You see what I'm saying? How much, how much do we not know? Imagine 200 years ago. That we don't, you know what I'm saying? How much is do of what we know is what they want us to know? Yeah, I think all of it. Is exactly. In a, in a multicultural environment, especially such as the United States, where we where we promote land of the free and home of the brave, you have to you have to minimize knowledge because then you get rebellion. You, that's where, that's where rebellion comes from. Yep. So this way, saying is like two hundred years ago. You didn't have these cameras. You didn't have oh, man. Instagram. You didn't. You didn't have Facebook. So now we're supposed to believe that we have this revolution. And everything's documented the way, the, the right way. Yeah. Well, and when they missing stuff with the cameras. Christopher Columbus. Yes. Yes. I mean, like I said, history, history itself has a shaky history. Yep. But we're waking up, man. We really are. We're waking up. Like the country in Africa just found a whole mountain full of gold. They call it the New Age of Congress. Like how Congress really? Congress, it was a mountain full of gold in one of the poorest uh, areas in, in the country in Africa. And the whole mountain full of gold, a shaft How long is it going to take until that thing gets taken? Yeah. Colonized. Yeah. They'll say, oh, this discovery wasn't real. Yeah. yeah. America owns that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, did, you ever, did you ever hear the... Uh, <laughs> did you... 
We got a deed of trust right here from Stop, stop, bro. Stop. Did you did you ever hear the uh it was this is probably like four years ago where that dude you know how Pablo used to bury his money? There was a farmer in Peru, no no in Colombia that found five hundred million a five hundred million dollar block. And I told my wife, I said, Man, I hope that was six hundred million. <laughs> I, I hope he reported. No, nah, because if you watch Pablo documentary, everything that he buried was six hundred million installments. I hope so. If he reported if you go back Yeah, he he turned it because in. Because he was scared that Pablo people were But nobody trying to uh spend Pablo I'm, I'm money, sure bro. They, I'm sure they kicked him back something. I hope so. I'm pretty so. sure they probably. If he, if he turned in fine to me, if you watch the Pablo documentary, it was six hundred dollar barrier splash everywhere. Did you watch Narcos? Yeah. Oh my God. Narcos was a good uh, documentary. Well, that's what's so funny when they, when they try to say like like Bill Gates is the richest person in the world or Jeff Bezos. I'm like, man, Pablo's making 18 billion a year cash. Like, come on. Look, I, 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 I told them they had an article I was reading after I watched Narcos because I never was really Pablo was so old. You know, I'm, I'm only 26 years old. So by the time I was born, it was a topic when they talk about. You know, drug laws and stuff like that. That's what you hear about Chapo. So, yeah. I was reading the article in 1980 or 75, something like that. Probably was worth $75 billion. With inflation, that'll be more than what Jeff Bezos had. Unbelievable. Straight cash, honey. And that's what they know about. And that's what they know. Yeah, that's what they know. That's what, know. That's what, know. That's what was so crazy about those shows. They were talking about he spent $25,000 a month in rubber bands. Mm-hmm. Giving away $10,000 to poor people. What they said, they, they said a million dollars a month was eaten by rats? Mm-hmm. What was it? Yeah, something, something like, that. like that, right? They had so much money. Oh, my and God. The rats was just eating it. Yeah. You, you, you have... They had nowhere to put it. Snap was in the Oh, that's this? Mm-hmm. That's, that's a. Have you been to any Middle Eastern countries? Um, we stopped in Doha, Qatar, for about 16 hours, and so I got a. Uh, I had a tour guide come pick us up real quick, mm-hmm. and then I, I actually got a haircut. Um, he took us to a. Uh, oh man, not Turkish. Oh, I'm so blanking on that on his uh was he Turkish? I'm blanking on his ethnicity, but we went to a barber shop. I think he was Turkish. Went to a barber shop in Doha and we had a chance to see Doha for like three hours. But that was um and they're they're having the Olymp- they're having the uh, World Cup there in twenty twenty two. In Turkey. So in uh, Doha oh, in Doha. Qatar, yeah. So it's a it's a very modern um very modern city. Real nice. I mean, it's so crazy there. Like, you talk about learning stuff. Like, there's a portion of that city that is, they brought in sand. They they brought in, they, like, purchased sand from different parts of the world. And they built, they, like, put the sand down, like, masses of sand. And they built uh, an airport on the sand that they brought in. It's, ins- really? it's insane, yeah. Because yeah. the, the guy that was taking our tour guy, he had a, um, he kept his, on purpose, because he, he, because it was like his touring business, he kept the maps like an old, like either like MapQuest or Yahoo Maps, or whatever, and he keeps it on his phone. So when he drives people back to the airport, he can see that it looks like you're driving on water. Oh wow! Based on how the map used to be, on all the sand they brought in. But um, but yeah, that's my only. I I had Egyptian barbers when I was in South Africa. Those guys are good, man. You know, Egyptians uh, basically started. The barbering craft. Mm-hmm. They started everything, didn't they? Yeah, you know, you know, you know. Back in the day, <laughs> barbers, started, barbers were like the first doctors. Yeah, they were doctors. They yeah. were surgeons. Sur- yeah, yeah, they did. Man, they counselors. They man, they was yep. everything, bro. Yeah, barber. I'm not feeling so well. I'm going to the barber. That's what, the, dude. They would, they would bleed you. My that's what, hurts. that's what the pool. You I know, broke my arm. that pool signalizes like the, the the red thing on the pool. It mm-hmm. signalized like they would take your blood out. Bloodletting. Yeah, bloodletting. It's a real thing. Mm-hmm. We had to learn that when I was in school. Oh, really? The history, 
they barbers used to perform uh, ceremonial ceremonial circumcisions for the community and everything like barber. Yeah, that was barber and everything. The first razor was made out of stone, a certain kind of stone. The first, first razor? The first razor was a filed down stone. Wow. It looked like a, it shaped like it was shaped like an arrowhead, but it had it wasn't a, like it wasn't smooth. It, it was like broken up, but it just had sharp edges. It was a piece of stone. Like the arrow. Well, you see some of the crazy Instagram videos where guys are cutting hair with the craziest stuff. Yeah. That's why. I, that's why. Actually, did you ever go to Little East House? Actually, did you get the fire experience? Yeah. So I did it in Doha. Okay. He put the fire on my ears. Mm -hmm. Well, not the not the the top hair, but he put the fire on my ears to burn to burn the little hairs off the ears. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll be honest, that's why I've, I've really kept this thing up with the, the barbershop thing. Because um, I'm just trying to be like a voice to show that all cultures are amazing. And I'm doing one of the most intimate things you can do by letting another man put a blade on my neck. <laughs> that, uh, it shows that uh, if you're just scared to visit somewhere, you're crazy because I'm going there and letting people cut me. And uh, so you can visit yeah. too. Yeah, you can visit too and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So that's what, right there, yeah, bro. that's why I'm just trying to continue to promote that and show people that it's, it's uh, the more you visit these other places, you can learn. It's the cool thing is you can learn so much about them, but then you also learn more about the place where you live. Because mm. every time I come back to America, I appreciate America that much more. I see our, I see our positives and our negatives a little bit. And it just, uh, it just enlightens you in a different way. Man. So true. And I talk about you go to a country where they give anything to have in like the slides right there. You need shoes or those shoes. Yeah, yeah right. They, never, they don't even have shoes on my feet. We're sitting over here bitching and complaining about some of the things that we are fighting about. When I think Americans are spoiled. Worried, yeah. We are spoiled, about, bro. So spoiled. These people are worried about how many of them eat just a sliver of bread for the next day. Like, have y'all ever watched them uh, shows on, um, I want to say it's History Channel? Like, I seen one that was, like, the men that built America. Just the, the scandalous stuff they was doing to each other back then, bro. Oh, man. Just to have power. I can't imagine. Man. Well, what's crazy, I recently read the uh, Geronimo book. Uh, he's the Apache leader. Yeah. And, and you would think, like, okay, this is a long time ago, but he died in 1907 or 1906. Okay. And just to understand that like how crazy it was for him where they were basically just out doing their thing. I mean, Apaches were, uh, I mean, they would kind of invade places, take some goods. And they, they weren't crazy violent, but there was some violence. But then in Arizona, when all these gold, the gold rush rolled in and mm -hmm. the, the settlers came in and they just, the violence that, <laughs> that, uh, and, that, that followed with that and then they really didn't know what these Indians were, and then the Indians didn't know who these guys were, so that just the fighting and, back and, and forth. And it was day land to them. Absolutely, they'd the been other here. Indians respected not to come there. Yeah, they so were. Now the, you got this it's a battle of power, man. Yeah. Power and land. And then so just uh, all that conflict, but just how amazing those guys were. Geronimo, man, these to read some of those, like how they survived as much as they did is pretty amazing. And, and then to learn 
how we treated them is just insanity. Uh, it's just but, from day one, dude. Bad, right? Yeah. Our whole, I mean, our, our country is built on money. Can't argue yeah. that. Everything you hear is all about money. Every decision. This right here is this dude from Milwaukee make this beer cream. So I've been some. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice too. You gotta need to know it's what like it mustard. is. Called Tasami <laughs> Beer Cream. Sweet, dude. Yeah, he been down here uh, getting it in beauty supply stores and everything. Cool. Yeah, I'll hit him up for some. Buy some. And is it is it like a end shine or what's it what's it used it's, for? Um, uh, it's good. Like make your beer soft. It's a nice smell. Um, he got a lot of natural ingredients in there. I've been trying to be on a lot of that, like the um, aloe veras and the, you know what I'm saying, the cocoa mm -hmm. butters and the stuff like that, the natural vitamins. Like it's not thick, you yeah. know, you can feel it, you know what I'm saying, and like most of my clients like it, they be asking me for it, so. Nice. Yeah, a lot of barbers sleep on the uh, the chance to make money off of products too. Oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's where it's at. That's a good yeah, hustle. That's, I mean, if you want to scale up, that's what you got to start doing. Yeah, yeah, that's what you got to start doing. So grab a few bucks here and there from all that stuff. Right. Wow, you you ready for war? David Beckham right now. <laughs> I'm on, like I said, I'm on the 26, so I, I watch kids go from playing outside to staying inside on the game. I used to be like, man, these kids need to go outside, but kids ain't getting in trouble like I used to. That's true. They stand inside on their game because they don't want their game to, so they're doing, they getting their homework done, they, they stand wow. out in trouble to go home and get on their game. Wow, that's crazy. That's well, deep. Now little pussies, though, too. That's, hey. dude, that is deep. I didn't even think about that. That's... But these are the same kids that are saying, uh... Mr. Potato Head is offending me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Aunt Jemima needs to go. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a level of wokeness that is crazy, but what you're describing, I never even thought of that, dude. I mean, I mean, is those kids. Wow, this is awesome. Kids Shh, kids Arby, Arby. Shh. This is awesome. I'm not putting no. I'm not putting my kid off. These days and times, my child want to sit down and play the game all day live. That's up. Well, hopefully he getting good at it and yeah. he can go pro. A 14-year-old <laughs> kid just made three million. Yeah, you can go pro now playing, playing the game. That's what these parents in don't Vegas. understand no more. Hey, Vegas. so Javid, I don't well, know if your parents ever out. said this, but our parents used to tell us that the video game was gonna break their TV. Yeah, don't play. You the game. ever heard that one? Don't play the game on the TV. It's gonna break their TV. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why they made, oh, that's, that's why they, so funny. That's why they made that first oh, Nintendo controller. That's so funny. You can throw that. Thing no, you're through. talking about the pixels. Yeah. Yeah. That is mean. so oh, funny. They used to tell us that, bro. But see, that's like, look. That's I actually, I have heard that. Yeah. That's the that Atari 2600, 5200. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna burn it out. You're gonna yeah. burn out the television. You're gonna burn the TV yeah. out. <laughs> you're gonna burn the TV out. <laughs> hey, but look, then you mess yeah. up because you get but that. But there you go. You that that, that goes back to brainwashing 101. Mm -hmm. No, but that's some, that's some savvy shit though. Yeah, then the, kids, the kids are like, oh, you're probably right. No, uh, nigga, it's like, hell no, this shit ain't true. Hold this one. You sit too close to that TV, you're gonna go blind. Yeah. 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 Oh, rub it back up. When you back up. Rub it back up a little bit. You ain't know her, bro. You sit there. You sit. Shh, Arby, come on, man. Yeah, but now, man, I know when I was getting my uh, degree and I'm in there with, like, parents and stuff, Nah, I'm a, I'm a gamer. Like, I, I get down there and play with... That's how I bond with my son and my nephew through the video game, bro. Like, yeah. I, what I noticed, because I was doing uh, youth care work and I was a mentor. 
And what I noticed when I was out there at Lad Lake in Oconomowoc is that when I chose to play the game with the kids, they would tell me more. Oh, while you're playing, yeah, they're, you're because connecting. because you got to think about it like niggas talk shit or everybody. Not even just us, but everybody. Men talk shit when we play the game. Yeah, for sure. You get what I'm saying? So now you... When you get somebody that's doing that, they done opened up to you now. Because now they feel, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They feel comfortable with you because they feel like they can talk trash. And then, you know, that's when I would slide in the little questions. Because yeah. now they, they into the game and they, they not paying. They, yeah, they in their comfort zone. And that's how I used to do my, my son and my nephew. And that's how I got them to trust me, to telling me things that they really didn't want to tell me. But now they already done halfway into telling me what they wasn't supposed to tell me. Yeah. And they can't go back now. <laughs> you can't go back See now. Late, motherfucker. Yeah. Hey, hold on. What you were saying? Oh, J. Rob, you mixed this just, just perfect. Check my blood pressure in so long. They hit me on that pump and walk out the room. Gone. Tell me everything I need. Like my grandma was a big cooker. She didn't teach me how to work the little triple bean skills and all that. Shit. You put a triple bean in front of one of these kids. They don't even know what to do. All the old skills, you step up the doctor, you sliding that thing. Yeah. These kids wouldn't know what that is. Jeff, it was you there when, um, when the triple bean got stole out of uh, the biology room? I don't think so. You know they checked all of our lockers? No way. They checked every black person in their class locker. Oh, man. And it was this dude, this, I mean, I hate to say it like that, but it was this white dude <laughs> named Charlie that I went to middle school and elementary school with. Yeah. And he was the culprit. But they checked all of our lockers, though. Yeah. I can see that happening. Man, you talk me, you talk me about 40. You talk me Brooklyn about 40. They must have celebrated after last night. Did you ever, did you ever run into Harden out here? Oh, yeah, I see him at Prospect all the time. Harden used to always be out. What's Prospect? It's right down the street. It's a uh, gentleman's okay. club. Uh, nah, uh, uh, it ain't. It's just like a regular nice little club. Oh, okay. If y'all want to go there after that, we can. After here, we can. How was he? he ha he's probably pretty. He got a restaurant here. It's called 13. But, I mean, is he pretty? Uh, he, he probably doesn't open up much. No, around. This is city. Yeah, this hard city. God, why'd he leave then, dude? He opened up to the women. <laughs> oh, I know it. Hey. No, nah, but Harden had a lot of friends here, bro. It seemed like it. Why'd he leave? He had a lot of friends here. I was mad when he got when he left. Uh, I think it was more so, well, put it like this. They messed up by getting D'Antoni, bro. That West, system was trash. They messed up with yeah. Westbrook, though. Well, I'm, I'm talking about before Westbrook, bro. They messed up with D'Antoni. You cannot, you know this, bro. You can't win no game. Because I'm gonna shoot more than you, and then I'm just hoping the average is gonna be that we make more than you. Cause that was that was his like he didn't care nothing about defense. He's only won once, right, Dan Who? Tony? Who we win with? I thought it Phoenix one year. Nah, no, nah, Phoenix ain't won. When they, won. they ain't won since. But that was like early what? That was Barclay. the seventies. Did no, they, they win with? Win with oh, they didn't win with Barkley Marley. Okay, yeah, they lost. They with Barkley. Yeah, but he went there. That was uh Paul. Uh, what oh, was Westfield. Name? Yeah. Okay. He went to the conference finals. Yeah, they went to the finals, but I mean the conference finals, but. That's it. Yeah, I don't. I just love Harden's game so damn much, man. Oh man. 
I'll be trying to tell he, my dude, one He boy. is living in the future. Who better harden the curve? Well, uh, they're just so and different, what? bro. They're so different. That nobody Overall? can nobody can score like Harden. Nobody. Nobody. Dude. KD, what, don't, KD. Yeah, KD is pretty amazing. But like Harden, just like no, but see, to create your own shot and score. Yeah. Put he it like is, this. He is, nobody did. He like yeah, you can't, can't compare him to anybody because nobody's ever done what he's done. Because ain't nobody ever been able to go to the bat, the free throw line at will like him, bro. I'm gonna be honest. He the only one that can go to the free throw and, line at will. And to have he handles. Yeah, he might get it. What? Right now, he might MVP. And he have, might get it though. To have handles like he does, that he he absolutely created. Like Le- Reggie Miller had uh, the we step don't, back. We don't really know that yet. Reggie no Miller had the step back, no but his step back right. has totally revolutionized the game. You can't you can't argue with that. Because now, now, dude, you watch a high school kid. Everybody doing it now. This high school kids can do his step back. Shit, you see how uh, Luca doing his step back? It's unbelievable. Man, James, why don't you better with a hand in his face than he do over? There if you go. did that step back in the nineties, they travel, would call bro. you travel yeah. every. Man, you every don't step time. in the nineties would have been a travel, bro. Yes. And yes. Coming out the game. Come yes. They'd be like, "What are you trying to do here?" Hey, did you see the little kid? Uh, Hit the uh, Steph Curry three and then do the backwards flip before it went in, bro. <laughs> These little dudes is crazy, bro. I heard he got it on 2K, though. I heard he got it on 2K, bro. Hold on. In the game, bro. Hold on. He did a flip. Dog, he did a backwards flip before it even went in, bro. In the game? Oh, my God. I got to see this. In high school? I, I don't know see if he this. Was, he, I don't know. He might have been in high school. He was oh, good, though. Oh, my but God. He might have been in high school. I'm sure it's you. That's fucked That's up. That's crazy. He, he better have won that game by 30 years. Man. Oh, my God. See him this outside. is gorgeous. But now that's like that's – and that's no, what these little dudes – I tell you the truth. I love Curry's game. Oh, yeah. yeah I Curry love Curry's game. Don't get me wrong. Curry's He's a great game. shooter. He's the greatest shooter that's ever played this game. There's no arguing. But – Harden putting off Jordan numbers, though. Jordan, like you – the most prolific scorer. But here's the thing. We've never really seen KD on his own, and we'll never we'll never have the opportunity to see it either. Yeah, I don't think we ever gonna see because it. Because at his peak, he always had studs around him. I just Man. can't I can't imagine they never show up. KD. And this ain't the era for the no on but, their own either. No, but could you imagine K D by himself like, hey, we need you every night to get forty, buddy, he would have averaged fifty. Yeah, he probably would have. He's so unbelievable. I mean, he's he's like too hard to stop. At you, you cannot stop him. The game, the, the game down. he blew his Achilles when he like when he came back in. Well, he shouldn't have never came hit back. Hit those though. two threes you know right that. away. I was like, oh my god, this you guy know he should have never came. He back. is so unbelievable. Yeah, he, should, that, he that rushed. Should be fired. Because the first time when he got hurt. They talking about he touched his calf. No, he didn't. He grabbed that ankle. Everybody knew it was the Achilles, he grabbed bro. That. Yeah, right, bro. Especially if you was a hooper. Everybody, we're like, we're like, look at Kobe. Exact same thing happened to Kobe. Like, yeah, if you played any kind of sports, or you got any kind of knowledge of the human body, you knew that was the Achilles. Yeah, yeah from the, the get. Knew that too. They was just from the get. Yeah, I don't know why they, 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 they didn't even it. need him to win though. The second time they couldn't pull him back. You seen them little shoot up the back of his. Yeah, you you watched it roll up like a rubber band. Oh, so gross. They say it feel like somebody kicking you in the back of the leg. Man, it, it sounds like a, a like they say somebody Snaps. like a pop, like a loud like rubber band pop or something. Here's the thing though, man. These kids are so good today. Have you like just how talented they are? Like right now, the NCAA tournaments in Indianapolis. So I went to a game. Uh, I saw uh, Oral Roberts beat uh, Florida. Well, Oral Roberts is in Oklahoma, right? Yeah, Tulsa. Okay. That's where I went out of high school. Oh, you went straight there? Yeah, yeah. Both stuff was the coach. Oh, really? Yeah, that was, I that's I where I signed. Roberts from somewhere. I didn't yeah, know how I... yeah, yeah. I signed there okay. at high school. But um, you just look at those players, and God, they're all. Everybody can. Everybody can shoot the three. Everybody's got decent enough handles. They actually play defense better than any era before. The players Wait, are where now? Yeah, everybody knows. They might not give it their all. But everybody knows basic concepts like every player is more educated than ever. They all have more skills than ever. And 
But the only boring part of the game is it's threes or layups. That's the only. There's no mid range at all. Yeah, no, hey, and that's what they're not understanding, bro. There's no mid range. You have more Glenn Robinsons right now. <laughs> Can you imagine? Uh, yeah. Steph Curry got that going. Oh on. my God. I mean Clay. Yeah, they're so fun to watch, man. Hey, J. Rob, Jordan been balling. He had like twenty some last night. That D League helped him. Who? Jordan Poole. Remember they dropped him down to the D-League? Yeah. And he was averaging like 20-something in the D-League? Yeah, like 24 last night. Steph wasn't playing, though. But uh, Clay said, Javid, that uh, Jordan Poole gave him a run for his money when it comes to shooting behind that arc. Really? Yeah, bro. Not Clay to pure sure. Yeah, and I think oh. Jordan just been nervous. Like, I think he just – I don't think he relaxed yet. I think he need to try to find how to relax so he can have a long career. I've watched Clay's third quarter multiple times. Oh, bro. Oh, the, the that 15, is, 15? oh, my God. It was so crazy. Man, that dude was shooting that mug. He was shooting the ball like it, like it had a magnet. In it. it was so crazy. And he knew it. And that's what, that's what I love so much is Steph knew it. And Steph don't even care. He just, just kept feeding him, feeding him, feeding him, feeding him. And that's why I like Steph. Yep. Because Steph know when you hot, I can get hot. Yeah. So we're going to let you get hot. You're going to stay hot. Yep. Because I can get hot. Oh, still going to let you stay. Definitely let you get your shine on. Hey, because you know what I do think? Steph like being a decoy. I think Steph loves being a decoy. Steph like the spotlight on him so he can sneak and get them open three. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. when KD was there, I think Steph loved being a decoy, bro. Although he's a point guard, he he's probably the best off-ball player I could see. He know how to get open. Don't he? He know how to, hey. And then I was watching somebody, I forgot who it was, they were talking about how how Steph can go through them, like go through through people, like how he can like transfer his body in certain positions to where he can slide. And really? It make, it, it make it so hard for you to hold him. Because you can't slide your body like through, through there like he can. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Because of his stuff. stature. Yeah. yeah.
last time you seen uh, Lamont or Aubrey? Uh, Lamont. Well, Lamont used to come to my shop, so I used to see him all the time. Yeah, I probably saw him. It was right before I went on the trip, so. Uh, probably right, right at four years ago. Last I heard, he was going to try to get his own covers. Because you know he was a manager there. Oh, really? Yeah. And I talked to Aubrey. I haven't seen Aubrey, but I've talked to Aubrey in the last six months. Like Logan, <laughs> David Beckham. So you ain't heard that one yet, huh? Naturally uneven. It is. Uh, yeah, my hair. It's where, where my hair grows. Yeah, uh, bring it down a little bit. Yeah, I should have told you. <laughs> you got away. <laughs> yeah, it's just nat It's naturally higher on one side. God dang, that looks good, bro. RB, watch the tip of this way. Yeah. No, you're good. Just keep my room. That's what you look at. You feel yeah, me? That's yeah. how I go about mine. That's dope. Uh, you know who taught me that, J. Rob? Ooh. My brother B at the house. Yeah, you, when you look in the mirror, you see what yeah, the world. You see, see what they see. So That's that, dope. Yeah. He was like, man, look, always look in the mirror, bro. My, my head's bigger than your body. <laughs> my, my head's so big, dude. Five, five by four head. head. Oh, my five God. Fifteen with the body feet. of it. What that uh, Mike up saying? Three inch dick. <laughs> dude, <laughs> shut the fuck up. You have to cut that out. Yeah. Right. Cut all your words it's out. Right. You know how hard it was for me to keep my mouth Bro, shut Bro, I know. Time. You just keep silent, dude. Bro. Let him finish. It's like three Almost and a half done. hours. Almost done, bro. I had my lip. Hey, it was in the corner. Please stop. 
Chuck's going to tell you to shut up and then sleep next week. That's fine. I'll give you Chuck up. RB, you got to move off the mirror, bro. No. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. That's cool. Yes. <coughs> yes. Oh, man. I'm excited. Hey, did you ever play with T Black? Yeah, in the summers. No, he lived in Dallas too, right? Oh, really? Yeah. Hurting on the gravel lane. He was real. I loved his game. Yeah. Loved his yeah, game. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot of Milwaukee people in Dallas. Yeah, it is. A lot yeah. of Milwaukee people here in Dallas. Yeah. And in San Antonio too. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, a lot of people, uh, when Wells Fargo moved to San Antonio, they moved down there. Maybe. That's interesting. Did you, did you touch my eyebrows at all? No, you want me to? If you don't mind, just because that's carry a lot of age in my eyebrows. <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, if you, if, my, if you get the, if, get the balls, you just trim those up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. RB, you talk way too much, bro. Shut up. Here, come get this. And like, you can, like, yeah, like, like, shorten them. Yeah. Not too much. I'm not trying to look. No, I got you. Spanish. <laughs> we're, going, we're going to Honduras. Be Canelo. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go from David Beckham to Canelo. That's <laughs> perfect. We're on the Honduras. I ain't gonna lie, Jeff Van Gundy is my favorite announcer now. Oh, really? Oh, man, that dude is hilarious. He be saying some wild shit. <laughs> All right, last scene, let me shake this beard and we're we done. Where? That's what he say?
Beckham ring. You're going to be killing them. Beautiful. See? Yes, sir. Twist. Twist them. Look at that. Woo! <laughs> yes, sir. You got it? Oh, money. Money. <laughs> <laughs>